If you've ever thought about buying a business, whether it be a laundromat, a lawn care business, or whatever it is, the numbers have to make sense. In our Mike Minutes Mastermind, which is our daily mastermind we have with our franchisees at Augusta Lawn Care, I actually broke down the numbers in a few minutes on a laundromat deal that they were looking to buy and just wanted to analyze whether or not it's a good deal. And so I think it's a great thought process that you can use when you're looking to analyze of whether or not you should buy another business and get into another industry. Whatever you do, make sure you avoid the shiny object syndrome. Make sure you're getting into business and starting a new business because it's going to make you money, not because you're just distracted or you're entrepreneurial. Let's go ahead and roll the tape. I see a laundromat near me is for sale. I've been interested in this because of the low level of employees need to operate it. The asking price is 210000 It is a coin operated location that has a drop, wash, and fold service. I would drop the wash and fold service because I want to simplify the business. The sales are listed at 140,000 and the net is listed at 97. I looked up the business and was able to see that it was owned by an older couple that has been operating it by themselves. The Google reviews are sitting at four out of five stars. People are saying that it used to be better kept and that it could be more comfortable. This all seems like an opportunity to capitalize on the need of a boomer aged owner that is looking for liquidity. How should I go about analyzing this opportunity? How should I value the business? I heard Cody Sanchez from conventional acquisition say that these valuations are really mostly made up, meaning that it really comes down to what people think. I would like to do this with either an SBA loan or 90% finance or owner financing or a combination of two. What do you think? Okay, so several things that have my, my that go through my head. I don't know where you're at financially. So that's the biggest thing. Like it depends. Like if you have multiple locations, or you, it's very different what I'd be saying. But let me try to give advice. Uh, without knowing that because that is the determining factor but first and foremost ask yourself what's the difference what advantage do you have over the market in this industry this is where uh cody i think cody's amazing by the way but you have to remember the only reason you do a good you can make a great deal in boring businesses that don't require employees and it's just they run by themselves the only way to make a good deal work is you get a good buying you get a good buy it is not on the the, the uh because if, if there's nothing you can do to make the business more profitable by growing it, uh, and there's nothing, no employees required, there's no operational efficiencies, then you no know, vending machines, things like that. If there's no real improvements you can make on the business, it becomes commoditized in terms of the valuation. So the only way to really crush it in a business like that is the sale price needs to be incredibly good. If you could get this business for 50,000, now it becomes interesting, right? Because now you're able to make your money back within a year. So my first thing is, do you have any sort of edge on any other buyer when it comes to laundromats? Okay, this is why I've stayed very narrow to lawn care and only recently started going to real estate, right? Like all of my businesses are around lawn care. Like the gym, okay, that's separate. That I did that beforehand to figure out the franchise model, but even that is within franchising, right? So it's like lawn care, franchising, real estate. Like that's very narrow. And every single time I've ventured outside of that, I either stop, question myself, or I've started it and then just had to abandon it. Like keto ketosis cups. I was not a food expert. What was I doing? Why do I think I'm going to beat people who have spent years and decades of their life dedicated to that industry? So first and foremost, I'd be looking at, do you actually have a an operational advantage over anyone else buying? Secondarily, if you don't, the asking price is the only thing that matters, what you can buy it for, because then you're simply looking at numbers. Third thing I would look for is 141,000 in revenue. I would imagine that 30 to 40% of that is from the folding service and the washing service, if not more. I could be wrong. You're not giving me the numbers here, but I would imagine 30 to 40% of that is the wash and fold. So let's go ahead and say 100,000 of it is from the coin operated side of things. So now we're looking at uh, fit, about 50 to 60,000 in annual in annual profit if you take those numbers, because that their 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 expenses are fixed. Rent and utilities. Those are the two big ones when it comes to the laundromat. Because you have rent of the facilities, you have all the water, electricity to operate the machines and then you have maintenance right now if they were doing all the maintenance themselves they're doing all the labor themselves now you gotta look at that 50 to 60 thousand and ask yourself okay how much is that actually coming to me let's just say it's 30 to 40 grand after you take you hire someone else to do the maintenance uh cleaning because they were doing all of that you're gonna get 30 40 thousand dollars let's just say fifty thousand dollars to be generous okay that you're actually profiting on this business if you cut out the fold wash and fold service so you reduce labor but then you need someone else to do the maintenance fixing equipment repairing equipment changing it out but I promise you one thing, they're not fixing in asset uh, capitalization in terms of replacement costs for those machines. So max you're making on this is 50,000 a year. Now you just ask yourself, okay, 50,000 a year on 210,000 in 
in asking price, uh, that is going to take you four years to recoup your costs. Okay. Secondly, more from a cash flow perspective, we're now cash flowing about on fifty thousand a month or fifty thousand a year in profit. We're cash flowing four thousand dollars a year in profits on two hundred ten thousand dollars of a loan. You are going to be looking at about uh, two to three thousand dollars a month in your loan uh, if you're doing a ten percent down on ninety percent finance SBA. So you're literally looking at about fifteen hundred dollars a month in profit. That's the reality of this situation. Now, if you can get the asking price down to fifty to sixty thousand, because they're just done with it and they do not, they can't sell the machines by themselves, which is very possible. Now we're talking about something more interesting, where you're doing three to four thousand dollars a month in profit. Then the question is, is this going to take so much of your time, or if you just put this time, money, and energy and that same SBA loan into your lawn? care business would you make more than three to four thousand dollars a month in profit that is the question okay if you spent the amount of time energy and money that you're spending on this laundromat if you spent two hundred ten thousand dollars on your business would you make eighty thousand dollars a month in, in revenue would that make ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month in profit that is the question so again this is really depends on where you're at in business we are at in terms of financially um if you had two hundred thousand dollars sitting in a bank account that's, that's a different conversation than if you have ten thousand dollars in your bank account and you just got your business started uh for lawn care i truly believe two hundred ten thousand dollars on your lawn care business is going to net more than three to four thousand dollars a month uh and after the cost of financing fifteen hundred dollars a month i truly believe that those daily masterminds, by the way, are just one of my favorite things about Augusta Lawn Care. And if it's something that you'd like to be a part of, check out AugustaLawnCareServices.com slash franchise. Even if you have an existing lawn care landscaping business or you're just getting started, Augusta Lawn Care is a great place to connect with other like-minded individuals. And literally one out of three or four people that even apply, go through the vetting process, do we allow in the process simply because we are trying to create a group of individuals that are dedicated to growing their wealth, growing their business, and becoming better. And that's what those masterminds are all about. Every single morning, I'm on there. We're trying to improve each other's businesses, answer questions. And you can see, even that it's not even about lawn care all the time. We talk about real estate, investing, other businesses, the economy. And it's just the best part about being a franchise is you have like-minded individuals using the same business model and the same systems so you can bounce things off of. And it's just a great group of people that I think you might want to be part of. So if you'd like to be, check out AugustaLawnServices.com slash franchise. Our next training event is in, in November, and there are still a few more available spots. So check it out.